are you are you are you guys over it? Uh, I guess not completely. Um, you know, you still hold on to the feeling a little bit. I think you use that as motivation in terms of, um, you know, we should have done this and we could have done that. I think that's the part that we need to be over, and uh, we'll go out tomorrow, uh, you know, ready to to roll in practice and ready to start a new game plan and really put in the work for this week. What's your reaction to what Ezekiel said? Uh, you know, it's a highly emotional situation. Definitely um, not one, not something that you need to say in front of everybody, and especially the way that he said it. But um, at the same time, you got to understand where he's coming from and uh, the amount of work that he puts in, and you know how invested he is in this program. And things happen like that when you're a highly invested person. A lot, yeah. a lot of people think that it might affect you guys. Are you guys past that? Urban Meyer said y'all y'all squashed that sort of yesterday. Or you got oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it was uh, I think probably blown up a little bit more on the outside than anybody in here really uh, took it. So uh, definitely over now. Joshua, you grew up with this rivalry. I, I know you don't like the word revived, but what, what have you seen Jim Harbaugh already kind of add to this rivalry? <laughs> uh, I mean, you just look at their record right now, uh, nine and two, I think, and playing really good ball, um, you know, offense and defense. So I think that's what he adds is, is just you know, something to really look forward to and two really good teams going at it toward the end of the year. How much does a lot sweep these guys? I mean a lot, and that's what I was saying. You know, talking to my parents after the game, so the one thing that's going to really make me feel better is getting that fourth pair of gold pants, and so that's just a mission for me right now. I'm the goal for I know a lot of the seniors, uh, goal for a lot of guys around here is to just finish it off the right way. Josh, seeing their style of offense, how exciting is that for a linebacker, knowing they're going to use the tight ends, they're going to work the full back in. It's going to be a old fashioned rock and sock and football game. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of what we look forward to in our room, especially with some of the guys that we have. You know, some of the teams kind of make you play basketball a little bit and want to spread it out. And these guys are they're going to play some real football. And so, uh, you know, it's, uh, I think going to be good for us and we'll have a good game plan and uh, prepare the right way for that. Joshua, whatever happens for the rest of your life, you'll be a national champion, what you did here. If you would get out of here saying, I never lost to Michigan, how big a deal is that? Is that something you think you hang on to for the rest of your life? That's a huge deal. Um, you know, it's just something to brag about, something that you can always talk about, and something people around here are, you know, through all, I guess, eras of Ohio State football. Uh, can really appreciate, you know, national championships come around every so often, but you play that team every year. A lot is made around here, obviously, we are taping out the ends. When you hear the word Michigan, you know, I, you know, it's just something that gets you pissed off and fired up. Uh, you know, that's the way that they want it around here. That's the way it is. And the, the marching band came in yesterday. They do that uh, every Sunday before Team Up North game. And, uh, you know, they're singing, we don't give a damn for the whole state of. And uh, there was one kid in the band who was standing right there, and he refused to sing the song, and I was like, that's my guy right there. <laughs> but uh, those guys in the band should have had a lot of push-ups yesterday because they were definitely breaking the rules around here. With, with Harbaugh coming, there's so much speculation about the revival of the rivalry and could be like Woody and Bo and all that kind of stuff. To be a part of the first one, is it special to you guys? Uh, it's definitely going to be big. I know it's kind of the start of an era, um, and so it's always big to be um, you know, a part of the, the first of something. But uh, we still have a mission. We still have uh, an objective, and we got to make sure that we prepare the right way so we can uh, achieve our goal. It was pretty obvious that Michigan State was going to run the ball because of the conditions and obviously the, the injury to Cook. How concerning was it they were able to do that with success and push you guys around a little bit up front? Yeah, you know, I think that's the one thing is when you look at it, they had uh, some of the quarterback runs that hurt us. But the big thing for us is, you know, just kind of getting mushed a little bit, I think, for like three yards here, four yards here, maybe a six-yard run. Um, at some point, you know, it doesn't it doesn't kill you till it kills you, and you just kind of bleed you out a little bit. And I think that's the thing that uh, we were a little bit uh, upset about, and the thing that we want to work on right now is, uh, you know, at the at the point of attack, you got to build a wall, I guess, in the run game, and then uh, when you got a guy bottled up, you got to make sure you get him down, and don't want to allow those leaky yards. So it's something we'll look at. And that's what Michigan does, right? Yeah, they uh, they're very similar in that, and so. Um, you know, I think the one thing that we have done well this year is um, we haven't done something as well in one game. We respond to it the next game, so I think we'll be able to do that.
Is there a game or a player when you were growing up in that rivalry that you watched that kind of you know, clinched that this was a big game for you? Uh, the one versus two matchup probably was just a big one. I remember sitting around watching that one. Uh, you know, that was a huge game, a uh, really fun, exciting one, but one that just kind of really, uh, you know, did it for me in terms of what the rivalry really is. Josh, a couple of your teammates and Urban was talking about today talked about the frustration of not maximizing the potential of this team. It's obviously talented. What has that been like this season in trying to harness everything and, and get it all get it all together? You know, it was a day by day journey, and obviously you kind of want to see things happen. Um, you want to see the results, and uh, you know, it's a matter of just, I guess, chipping away and kind of breaking the rock every day. Um, you know, having the loss, I think, kind of, you know, makes people. Uh, reevaluate, I guess, what we've been doing and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of uh, maximizing the team, you know, that's it's hard to. I mean, after a loss, you say whatever, but it's really hard to even know if you really maximize your team until the end of the season. And so we still got games to play. Anything can happen. Can you, you guys, everything came together for you guys about this time last year. You won three games as underdogs and kind of kind of stunned everyone. What can you channel from that run? And, and do you feel like you need some of that mojo kind of going going forward here? Because everything uh, came together. Yeah, I mean, the big thing at, at that point was just how the leadership kind of took over, and I think that's what's going to be huge. Um, this week, especially because of the rivalry, um, kind of a little bit of a crazy schedule, Thanksgiving and everything, but also because of what happened this past weekend. Um, so I think uh, leadership and probably focus are going to be huge. Can you describe what this year has been like compared to last season? And just the, the, the pressure, the grind, whatever you might call it, about trying to repeat, trying to do what's something that you've already done a year earlier? It's not even pressure of trying to repeat because it's such a, a huge abstract thing to look at at the beginning of the year. It's just, uh, you know, making sure that we're prepared and we cover all the bases for every game. And I think that's what's been, um, you know, trying to, I guess, kind of getting people a little bit as we prepare for one thing. Sometimes in the game we see something different. Um, you know, you get all kinds of looks, you you get what's better than on the film, all that kind of stuff, and then you just got to go out there and, and just respond to what you get. Uh, and then you get in a big game and, you know, they say the most prepared team wins, and I don't I don't know if they could have out-prepared us because what we did here this past week was crazy, but, uh, you know, not have success is, you know, again, something that just really hurts, but at the same time, um, it's just, kind of funny that everybody talks about pressure trying to repeat. I don't know if that's what it was here. It was just pressure, not even pressure, but just the the process of trying to make sure that we were the most prepared team going out every week. Josh, you were talking about going against fullbacks and linebackers on the board pro style offense this week. Does that mean you guys are maybe could be putting more, the linebackers, I mean, in more pass coverage situations? And if so, how do you think you guys handle that? Because it seems like something you don't have to do very often. Um, you know, I don't know. I haven't taken a good look at their film yet. I know that they're probably going to have, uh, we're going to have matchups on tight ends. And we've had those a little bit this year, uh, especially in the Minnesota game. We were playing actually man coverage on tight ends quite a bit. Um, we're going to be probably matched up on fullbacks and tailbacks out of the backfield. And I think that we can handle that. So it all depends on uh, what they do, but also the game plan that our coaches want to put together this week. Can you follow up on that actually a little bit? Um, I can think of at least two touchdowns this year, including one uh, in the Michigan State game in which it involved the pass out of the backfield to a fullback. Uh, is there something, you know, it's not a typical thing for offenses to do. Is there something about that that takes advantage of something in your guys' defense? Yeah, I mean, generally when that happens, it's a, a, mis a misdirection kind of thing. And the one during the Virginia Tech game, they caught us under pressure, so that was a good call on their part. Uh, the one from this game, that was my coverage definitely, so I take that 100%, but uh, they caught us on misdirection again. Um, not necessarily tough to cover. It's just uh, making sure that you're very disciplined in your coverage doing that. Josh, uh, it's Joe. one of those things where if you get that play back, you can do it 100 times, but they just caught you on the one. Joey's supposed to said that there's been a lot of, it's been a very, very stressful year for him. Do you get a sense of that from him? I'm obviously this star player, a lot of pressure on him. Um, are you getting the sense that it has been a very stressful year for him? Uh, not really. I mean, Joey's just Joey. He comes out with the same attitude no matter if he had like 12 sacks in a game, which obviously nobody does, but or if he didn't have any stats, he's going to be the same guy. Um, so I think he's done a pretty good job of that. And one thing that we do see is that he does go to work every day. Um, you know, he provides what he can to the team, um, whatever he's asked to do, and I think that's really important for us. Hey, Joshua, Joshua you, you talked earlier about the pressure of meeting expectations. 
how close have you guys come to meeting your own expectations or how much potential there er, is there left to tap? Uh, that's a, a really good question. I, I think our expectations are based off of what we want to do that week. So we, uh, we just evaluate it week to week and we'll come up with an objective or three objectives for the week or whatever it is, um, just to make sure that we have something to look forward to. But it's really hard for us to make goals because um, you really can't look at your goals and evaluate them until the end of the year when the season's over. Uh, like I said earlier, it's really abstract to do that. Um, as for objectives, I think that we hit them. Um, I think that everybody in this building, though, strives to want to do better and strives to want to do bigger things. Uh, Jabril Peppers, uh, when he when he runs in there on offense, what are the things that will be going through your mind? I know you've seen him play a little bit probably this year, or at least you know of that and mm -hmm. stuff, the way they use him two ways and stuff. But what do you have to keep in mind, I guess, when he's on the field offensively, if in fact he is? Just be on high alert because uh, they're going to use him one way or another. Um, anytime you see special formation or somebody come in that's generally not in, in the offensive formation, you have to be on high alert for something. With the class of 2012, Bouncing back after the last Saturday, is it easier knowing that you have a rival on Uh yeah it is. Um, that's one of those things that helps you refocus. Like I said, it's one thing that we definitely need to do. Um, you know and it also definitely helps in the evaluation process too, what you really have. Um, how guys responded yesterday I think was pretty good just coming out here and going to work for practice, um, taking a serious approach to watching film and everything. And how we come out tomorrow, uh, and the work that we put in is going to be important too. Just last question. Who was that? When you walked out into that tunnel, uh, uh, you with him. What, what, are, what are those moments like? Hmm. Where you walk on the um, you know, last time we were up there was kind of nuts. We were both in the in the uh, tunnel at the same time, and uh, you can't even basically hear yourself thinking in there. Guys are just yelling, doing the whole deal, but. Uh, you know, it's a high energy point, and it's one of those points where you just got to really uh, stay within yourself, keep back, and make sure that you can keep your emotions contained until you get out on the field. And you know what happened in that game? I mean, uh, Dontre Wilson got <laughs> what happened early in that game and stuff. Uh, it, do you have to reinforce it with younger players, too, about what could be coming from the standpoint of coercion, et cetera? Yeah, you got to say something, but uh, I don't think that should be too big of a deal. I think, guys. This year, definitely understand there's a lot on the line in this game. Um, they understand uh, how big of a deal it is to make a stupid mistake like that because, uh, you know, it's one thing if a guy is out of a game because he's hurt or something happens, but it's another thing if a guy's disqualified because of something selfish. Mm -hmm. Joshua, has have any underclassmen thinking about the NFL, has that had any effect on this team? I don't think so. Um, all of our guys have been really unselfish this year. Guys don't re even really talk about that in the locker room. I think that the biggest thing is that everybody wants to go to work and we want to be successful as a team. Um, you know, there's nothing that tells me that anybody was, uh, you know, had any selfish motives. Anybody's, you know, on offense asking for the ball or on defense going out of their way to try to make plays. I think everybody is doing what they're asked to do. And just, I'm Last gonna ask question. You that you're the you're Mr. Big Picture guy on this stuff. You've been doing this for four years. Hmm. When a team with this much talent coming off a national championship with all these guys back loses, I think a lot of people are looking for emotional things, mental things, chemistry things, something, because you would look at the talent and say, man, they should be even better than last year. Is, is, that, is there anything to that? Is, is it that kind of stuff? Or if you lost to Michigan State, is it execution on the field, football things? Or is there any vibe or feeling that is contributing to where this team is? I would say it's probably the execution, the football things more than anything else. Um, you know, like I said, I think we prepared so hard last week and we went out and we had great practices. Um, guys were were highly energetic. Guys were really invested and, and highly involved and all there. Uh, and then you go out and you watch the film and you can see it's on defense, you know, uh, speaking for what we do, there were uh, some execution things where you wish you could have had a playback because you know you could have done it better, like I said. Um, you know, they, they fall forward for a couple extra yards because you're not necessarily wrapping up on a tackle or you slightly misfit something and so a guy just kind of gets on your hip and pushes you out the way a little bit and they hit a crease. Uh, just things like that, I think, all added up in that game. Um, and they might not have shown up in other games where uh, we could have just, you know, you make a mistake but you cover up for it because you're a little bit better. But when you face a team that uh, you're pretty evenly matched with that has really good players and those things start happening, they definitely add up, especially in a close game like that.